Hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well today. I have been thinking a lot about some conversations that I've had with my parents over the last year and a half. Um, and so I think I'm actually going to do this video in two separate parts for you. The first part, um, I didn't really think about race or ethnicity too much in my life until I went to college. Um, I went to Penn State and somebody there asked me why I did not write down on my application that I was Hispanic. Um, I'd never thought about it. Like my life growing up was just the way that it was between my grandparents. Uh, my dad is of German ancestry. He has blonde hair, blue eyes, very fair skin. My mom is of Mexican and Slovak ancestry. She has darker complexion, darker hair, dark eyes. And it, it started getting me thinking about how people are treated differently based on appearances or based on different parts of their identities. And last summer I was out at dinner with both of my parents and my mom was telling a story about how when she was growing up in high school, she was in what was considered the academic classes um, and she was the only non-white person in the classroom. And she would say that none of the white kids would talk to her because she didn't fit in with them. And then she said none of the kids of Mexican heritage would talk to her because she wasn't in the classes with them. And so she was kind of like in this limbo and caught between, and it just made life a little difficult for her. And that she gets frustrated when she goes out to places and people make comments that seem very innocent and they're not intending to do any harm, but it makes her question things about herself and about what is normal and um, wondering about her place in life. So one of the things that she says she often gets is, and actually this just happened a couple of weeks ago, she went to a book club meeting and somebody said to her, oh my gosh, you're so tan. Where were you on vacation? When did you get back? And she said, I haven't been anywhere. This is just my skin. This is who I am. And then she would say that when she would go to makeup counters at the, um, at the stores, People would say, oh, here's what foundation you need now. But when you lose your tan, come back because you're going to need this instead. And she's like, no, actually, this is my skin color. I'm not tan yet. I'm actually going to go darker. Um, and so my dad said, well, I don't understand what the big deal was about that. They weren't meaning any harm. They were just talking about your skin color. And she said, though, it made her think like what? is like, why wouldn't somebody think this was my natural skin color? That this is who I am on an everyday basis and not as a result of being tan or being in the sun. Um, he had a really hard time seeing that. And so what we would refer to that as is called a microaggression. And it's called a microaggression, not because it's small, but because it's on a one-to-one -one basis. And it's um, not macro, like on a larger scale. It's not that it doesn't hurt. And a microaggression doesn't have anything to do with the intention to purposely hurt somebody. Um, it's usually an unintentional comment or a question that has the person who is receiving that wondering about themselves, their identity, second guessing what that person is saying. So while the person in the book club or the person at the makeup counter didn't mean anything hurtful to my mom, what she heard was that, well, why wouldn't this be my natural skin color? And the thing is, is that if only one person says it to you or two people say it to you, maybe that's something that you can brush off. But if you're constantly hearing the same message being reinforced over and over and over again by different people, you start to think that there's something there. And this is what we mean. I fully admit I have done that myself by trying to find out more about somebody, by wanting to be connected to them, by wanting to show that I cared, I sometimes asked questions that didn't come off the right way. For instance, I asked somebody once, well, where are you from? Because she was telling me that she was Puerto Rican and she said, I'm from here. And so by asking somebody, where are you from? What that implies is that you're not from here, that you're somehow different and we can tell that. What I was truly trying to mean is tell me more about you. I'm interested in getting to know you. And so just thinking about how I could possibly change that question a little bit to tell me more about yourself. Tell me about your family. Tell me about um, your hobbies, what you like to do. I could learn more about that particular person than a question that 
might seem innocuous to me, but maybe she has heard time and time again by other people. Um, I hope you find this a little bit helpful in trying to pull apart some of the experiences that people have had. And I fully admit to you, these are not experiences that I have had. I have not experienced microaggressions because of my skin color, because of my race, um, and, and because of my socioeconomic status, because of my gender, because of my religion, but people close to me have. And in listening to them and hearing their perspective, it has helped me see how they could feel and how they're interpreting something, even if that truly isn't the intention of the person who's speaking. And so I think it's how can we lean in to learning more about somebody else's thoughts and their feelings and understand them as opposed to feeling defensive or upset because that's not what we meant. Now, the conversation with my dad didn't, he wasn't quite understanding at that level then, but we just had a conversation a couple weeks ago that helped him clarify and see things a little bit differently. And I will drop that one to you next Sunday.